मोस्ट रेस्पेक्टेड फैमिली मेंबर्स माय प्रणाम्स टू यू टुडे आई वुड लाइक आई वुड लाइक एक्सक्लूसिवली एक्सप्लेन द गॉड कंसेप्ट इन हिंदुइज्म दिस आई एम पर्टिकुलरली focusing just to make every hindu understand that hindu dharma hinduism sanatan dharma it is different from any other religion it is different from all the semitic religions in semitic religion the god created the world whereas in hindu dharma god manifested as the world in semitic religion god created every material in the world whereas in hindu dharma every material is the manifestation of the divinity this is exactly what hindu dharma tells so all whatever is present in this world we hindus never say that it is created by god but it is the manifestation of the god so god is present in everything but that does not mean that everything is god god is present in everything does not mean that everything is god how these two words are different if god is present in everything we call everything is divine not god so two words are very important for hindu dharma one the god the other one the divinity god is one and only one for hindus also vedas tell vishwada chakshurudha vishwado mugo vishwado bahurudha vishwada spat तम बाहुभ्या नमदि संपदत्रै ध्यावा प्रदिवी जनयन देव एका द वन गॉड व्हिच हैज गॉट आईज व्हिच हैज गॉट इयर्स व्हिच हैज गॉट ब्रेन व्हिच हैज गॉट फेस थ्रू आउट दिस यूनिवर्स एवरीवेयर एंड दैट गॉड आई एम जस्ट प्रोस्ट्रेटिंग विद फोल्डिंग हैंड्स बाहुभ्या नमदि सम padatrai dhyava prativi that particular god is manifested janayan deva eka manifested in everything present in the world and that god is one and only one janayan deva eka so we definitely say that that god it can be defined very well in hindu dharma but no other religion can define what is meant by god they only say the god said the god said the god said god cannot say because exactly if you are going deep into allah concept or jehova concept it's an imaginary <coughs> imaginary concept as god so that imaginary concept of god cannot talk to you directly people may be talking as the representative of the god whereas that god will not talk to you if you are going deep scientifically you can understand that so we define god edo vacho nivartande aprapya manasa saha imagining the god through your mind is impossible if imagination is impossible the words cannot be used for explaining the gods so edo vacho nivartande the words will come back because the mind cannot create any image of the god and what is god edo vacho nivartande aprapya manasa saha is an upanishadic word like that another explanation of upanishadic life gives you the message that edo va imani bhutani jayande ena va jadani jeevandi yat prayandi abhi samvishandi tat vijijnyasasya tat brahmeti that brahmam that is the ultimate god for hindus 
called Brahmam. That Brahmam is the one from where everything existing in this in this universe got manifested. So everything existing in this world got manifested from that Brahma. Every manifested thing existing in this world survive till the last date of its birth because of this Brahma. Edova Imani Budani Jayande Enava Jadani Jeevandi Yat Prayandi Abhi Samvichandi at the end. All these will be going back towards that Brahman. And that is what is known as Tad Vijitnya Saswa. Try to understand that. Tad Brahmedi. That is what is meant by the ultimate God for Hinduism. Nadatra Chakshur Gachadi. Eyes will not reach to that absolute God concept. Absolute God. Nadatra Chakshur Gachadi, Navak Gachadi, words will not reach there. No mana, <clears throat> mind will not reach there. Navitmo, nobody knows about that particular God exactly what is meant by God. Navijani, nobody can teach what is meant by God to others. Navitmo, Navijani, Edai, the Tanushishya, then how can I teach you what is meant by God? This is Upanishadic line, Upanishadic message. Exactly like that, Upanishad tells, Nadatra Suryo Bhadi, the light of the sun, is negligibly small compared to the light of that Brahma. Na Chandra Dharagam, the light of the moon and the stars, is nothing when compared to the glorious light of that Brahma. Nema Vidyudo Bhamdi. Even the light of lightning, it is nothing when compared to the glorious light of the Brahma. Udoya Magnihi Tameva Bhanda Manubhadi Sarvam. After that, what is this small lamp which you are lighting? Even it is nothing. And Tameva Bhanda, that, that God, Brahma, absolute essence of this world, absolute fact of this world, absolute truth of this world, Tameva Bhanda, it produces light from itself, Anubhadi Sarvam. It gives light for everything present in this universe. Tasya Bhasa Vishwamidam Vibhadim. The light coming from that Brahma, that glorifies everything in this world. So that is, that is exactly what is meant by Brahma. And yet Srotrayana Nasranothi, that Brahma concept which cannot be understood by listening to the explanation of the scholars. Nat Srotrayana Nasranothi, Ena Srotram Idam Srutam. But remember that it cannot be understood through listening by the years, but that particular power is responsible for the biochemical functioning, the functioning of the years present in your body. Through years you cannot understand Brahma, but you should understand that years are working, years are functioning because of Brahma. Yet chakshusha na pasyati, ena chakshum shi pasyati. You cannot see the Brahma absolute God concept through your eyes, but that divinity, that God is making your eyes functioning. Yet manasa namanudi, that cannot be understand, understood through the mind, through the analysis, but that particular God is responsible for making your mind functioning. And Yet Chakshusha Navashyati, Yena Chakshum Shivashyati, Yet Srotra Yena Srunodi, Yena Srotra Midam Srutam, Yet Manasa Namanude, Yena Hurmano Madam, Tadeva Brahmatam Vidhi. Remember that that is the only God. Tadeva Brahmatam Vidhi, Naida Medida Mavasadi. Not only that, that God is beyond all these things. And that concept of Hindu God is the absolute truth, absolute fact and absolute essence 
existing in everything tade jadi that does not move tan nai jadi that does not keep stagnant tad dure that is present in the in farthest distance tad dwandige that is also present in nearer to you nearest to you tad andarasya sarvasya that divine power is that god is present inside everything inside everything tad andarasya sarvasya tad sarvasya asya bakyada that is present outside also outside of everything so that is present in everything the god is manifested as the material in this world according to hindu dharma according to semitic religion like islam and christianity god created everything so god used the material and created everything and god kept himself away from this whereas in hindu dharma god himself manifested as the materials in the world so we say god is present in everything since god is present in everything everything is divine everything need not be god everything is present everything is called as divine isha vasyam idam sarvam idam sarvam whatever things are available here that contains the 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 power energy or the god since that that god concept is present in everything we call everything as divine that that energy of god is present in me i am part of the manifestation of the divine power so i say aham brahmasmi and that is present in you also so we say tatvamasi that is present in 1.6 million type of animals 4 lakhs type of plants that is present in 80000 types of trees and millions of types of micro organisms so we say i am atma brahma the the cosmic soul is para brahma and the individual soul is jivatma we call it paramatma para brahma jivatma jiva brahma so paramatma is the is the absolute god which does not have limitation and boundary it pervades everything in the world the whole cosmic system whole brahmandam is the manifestation of the god if it is the manifestation of the god naturally everything present in this world is divine everything present in this world is divine so if you can worship the god you can also worship everything divine and that god is present in the cosmic form because everywhere god manifestation is there means the power of god is there means even in english we say omnipotent omnipresent divine power that is god because of that divinity that god present in me i say i am divine because of the presence of that jivatma which is the part of paramatma i say my heart is beating at 68 times per minute i am breathing 16 times per minute my blood circulates about 60000 kilometers per minute and whatever i eat it digest automatically without my instruction and everything happening within my body is forking not because i am a product of god but because the manifestation of god and that god is present within me so i am divine aham brahmasmi so every plant every tree every animal and every system including living and non living system present in this world has got that manifestation of the god so we call it as divine anoraniyan mahado mahiyan atma guhayam nikhitosya jendo smaller than the smallest atom has got that divinity because it is the manifestation of the god you can see electrons are revolving around the nucleus in s orbital p orbital d orbital f orbital sp3 hybridized orbital and so on 
and who has decided that electron should move at 2182 kilometers per second through the specified orbital who has created that specified orbital that is the manifestation of the divinity so that god present in the atom anoraniya mahado mahiya just to think about this universe earth is rotating about 1640 kilometers per hour earth is revolving around the sun at 35500 kilometers per hour our our solar system is moving in the galaxy at about 69,000 kilometers per minute and our galaxy is moving towards the center of this cosmic system this universe at a speed of about 71,000 kilometers per second or so so everything is moving through the specific pathway nothing is deviating everything is moving at the specific pathway as directed by the nature so that nature is also called as the manifestation of the omnipotent omnipresent god so everything is according to rule it is going and that god we say isha vasya vidam sarvam that god we consider that is the that is the absolute form of god Srishtva Purani Vividhanya Jayatma Shaktya Vrikshan Sarin Siran Gaga Damsha Damstra Matsyan Tishtai Natushta Hridaya Purisham Vidhaya Brahma Valoga Tishanam Mudamaba Deva This is a line from Bhagavad Mahabharana Srishtva Purani Vividhanya Jayatma Shaktya That particular Paramatma Chaitanya That particular Paramatma force manifested itself as the small animals and so on vividani the atma vriksha that manifested as the plants sidan that manifested as the swimming animals that manifested as the crawling animals creeping animals crawling animals prikshan sarin sidan gaga that manifested as the birds damsha that manifested just like the animals like mosquitoes Gaga Damsha, Damstra Matsya, it also manifested as the, as the living beings in the ocean. And that God, after manifesting itself into these many forms, elevated, wanted to create, manifest as elevated form of animal that can understand the universe. So, that God finally manifested as human being which can, which could understand the, the great universe. So we say, Srishtva Purani Vividhanya Jayatma Shaktya Vriksha Ansarin Siran Gaga Damsha Damstra Matsya Tishtai Ratushta Hridaya Purisham Vidaya Purisham Vidaya After manifesting as human beings that God itself become happy is an explanation given in Puranas so we can say that everything present in this world is the manifestation of the God so this world itself Nandam Namadhyam Napunastavadim this is the absolute truth this is given in, in Bhagavad Gita 2 in the 11th chapter Vishwa Rupa Darshana Yoga Adhyayam the God itself or the God himself, we can say, whatever may it be. God itself is, is symbolically presented in the human form as the cosmic uniform. Cosmic form of a God. Uniformly it is presented. That we call as Vishwarupam. That is also explained in Vedas. Sahasra Shirisha Purusha Sahasraksha Sahasrapath Sabhumim Vishwadho Vrithva Atyadrishtat Dishangulam Purusha Evedam Sarvam Yat Bhodam Echa Bhavya Mudam Rathva Sieshanaha Yad Annena Tirohadi Yedavanas Mahima Adhojjayagam Stap Purushaha That cosmic form of God we represent. If we can represent the whole Brahmanda cosmos as the cosmic form of God, every part of that God 
is divine for us. If we say Mahatma Gandhi is Mahatma, and if we respect Mahatma Gandhi, every part of Mahatma Gandhi is respectful for us. We will not say, we cannot say that, I respect only the head of Mahatma Gandhi. We cannot say that I respect only the leg of Mahatma Gandhi. So every part of that, that Mahatma is respectful, worshipful, and we can adore and we can prostrate in before that particular figure. So if we can say God is manifested in everything, so naturally God is present in the stone also. So stone can be converted into an idol and it can be worshipped. In Ka, inside Kaaba also there is a stone, 32 centimeter diameter stone covered with a silver. And Kaaba itself is made of stone. Everyone do the, everyone does the production of around that. Even the cross is also an idol. Jesus hanging in the cross is also an idolic symbolic presentation. The pictures of so many saints is also presented. If you are taking Quran, Bible or Bhagavadam, if Quran is holy and every page and every letter of Quran is holy, divine, if Bible is holy, every page and every letter in Bible is divine, so we worship that particular book also. If anybody is burning a small piece of Quran, naturally he is uh, sentenced to death what happened in, Jap in Pakistan. So remember that the div divinity we attribute to the holy box, holy books. Divinity we attribute to that. So that is connected with God. Whatever is connected with God, we say divine. What when God is is connected with our mother, we say Matra Devo Baba. Mother is divine. God is connected with our father because from them we born in this world. So, Pitra Devo Bhava, so Father is divine. If the manifestation of the God is present in the Son, the Son is responsible for the life in this world, so we, we respect, honor, prostrate towards the Son, S-U-N. So, we chant the mantra, A Krishna, Rajasa, Vartamano, Nemejaya, Namardam, Martyam, Jekiranyayena, Savitaradena, Devo Yadi Bhavanani Pashyan Adityaya Namaha. Not that son is God, but son is divine. Not that mother is God, but mother is divine. Not that father is God, but father is divine because God is present in them. So we consider God is present in our motherland. So mother and motherland, same concept. So worshipping our motherland, which is divine for us. We say Matra Bhumi, Janani Janma Bhumi Shcha, Svargada Vigari Yasi. If the whole universe, the whole cosmic system is manifestation of God, every part of that God is also divine. So if earth we can consider as the part of the cosmic system, naturally earth is divine. So India is part of this earth. So Bharat Mata, India is divine for us. And Himalaya is divine because it is the part of this earth. Earth is part of cosmic system. The cosmic system is the manifestation of the God. So everything connected with the God, we call it not as God, but the divine. But in Sanskrit and regional languages, the word God and the divine generally used in the same way. For a common man, it is the same. We say, just like Jala Chandravata. So we always say Srishtva Purani Vividanya Jayatma Shaktiya Prikshan Sarin Gaga Damsha Damstra Matsyan Tishta Iradushta Hradaya Purusham Vidaya Brahma Avaloga Dishanam Mudamava Deva. Only human being can understand the divinity. Only the human being can understand the presence of God in every living and a non living being. 
that is why we say human beings are the elevated form of in the evolution of the animal system so it is not that god everything is god but it is the manifestation of god so mountains are divine because it is the part of cosmic system the rivers the ganga the godavari everything is divine because it is the manifestation which is present in the cosmic form that manifestation is present in the earth that manifestation is present in the mountains in the hills in the rivers because these are all part of the cosmic form they are all divine whatever is divine we worship them we respect them we honor them we fold our hands before them and when we worship an idol it only means that through the idol we are looking to the cosmic form of the divinity for a common man it may not be easily digestible but when you go deep into the subject you can see that drishyate jala chandravat drishyate jala chandravat means just like the moon is reflecting in the waters moon is only one and only one that one moon is reflecting in the water collected in a small pot the water present in the ocean in the river in the sea in the pond even the water present in the road side will be reflecting the moon so the reflection of the moon can be seen the manifestation of the moon can be seen as image in all the waters so that image is needed for imagination without image it is impossible for a common man to imagine what is meant by god so through the idol we are doing the imagination the meditation of the god you just think about a lower primary student a student will not be in a position to understand the the huge size of earth without giving him a small or a miniature form of the earth which is known as globe you put a globe on the table and start explaining about earth to that student or the group of students they will be understanding where is america where is ireland where is india where is kerala where japan is situated from the globe it is easy for them to understand at their level so globe is needed at a lower level when the student grows and elevate himself to higher standard then merely a map is enough a two dimensional map is enough for imagining about the the countries or the earth but at lower level three dimensional globe was needed at a higher level two dimensional map is enough still at higher level you can see in sat picture or photograph of earth that is enough for him to understand where every country ocean and everything is situated when you elevate yourself to a higher position from the idol level you will be coming directly to the level of imagination meditation of the god without the figure without the picture without the form without the size but you cannot directly go to the god without a a figure and size if you are going you are understanding about the god is wrong if you are directly going to that level just to think that without studying lower primary higher high school or the colleges one fellow starts directly doing the surgery of a patient as a doctor or if starts designing an overbridge as a civil engineer or if he starts auditing the account without studying in the schools and colleges directly start auditing the account what will happen you know what will be happening if a judge has not gone through the basic education of the law and other thing and start directly giving the verdict about the victims and the or the culprit what will happen so thorough knowledge systematic and customatic knowledge right from lower level to higher level is needed and that is what is meant by elevating oneself to a higher level directly you cannot go to the end point and start worshiping and that may be possible for one or two people like like shankaracharya even shankaracharya did idol worship because it is needed for elevating through the idol you are not looking to the stone you are looking through the idol the ultimate omnipotent omnipresent divine power that is why it is called 
Vigraha. Early morning or evening or after taking bath, if you are standing in front of the mirror, you are not standing in front of the mirror for seeing the mirror, but through the mirror you are watching yourself or seeing yourself. That is idol is needed for, for imagining the, the omnipotent, omnipresent, divine power. One cannot imagine the endless and the beginningless form of the God just like that. If you start imagining that, then the whole thing will be getting confused. That is what is happening for certain religions. Terrorism is growing and restlessness is growing and stringent religious rules are holding them together. If the stringent religious rules are broken one day, the whole system will collapse. That is what is happening in the West, in the European country, America, England and other places. People are not going to the church. They have never seen what is meant by Bible. They have never read what is meant by Bible. Why? Because they cannot imagine the so-called Yehovah without, uh, without form and size in the beginning. After that he can reach. After that the devotee can reach the higher level. But to start with you need four line copy for writing English letters. You have to have a copy book for writing beautiful letters. And after that you need not have to have a four line book, only two line book is enough. After two line book you need not have to have a lined notebook at all. You can write in a book without, without having any lines in that. So your handwriting will be good but for reaching that level you have to start with a four line copy book. This is what Hindus said and Hindus are telling. In Puranas different forms of divine power is explained. How the form of Ganesha, Muruga, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Parvati, Brahma, Shiva came. You, you just put an image in your mind, close your eyes and start, start doing meditation. You start doing meditation and finally the mind will be giving you a form of that particular form is painted as Ganesha. So the, the God or the absolute formless God that you start thinking and you start imagining and you start meditating and you start just analyzing within your mind which is the internal laboratory and finally one form will be evolved from your mind depending upon the depth of your meditation. That is what Patanjali has told in the fourth chapter of Yoga Shastra. Whatever you want to know more and more, keep that formless thing within your mind. Start meditating. The mind will give you a form. Like that, that mind is giving the form. That is what we call Shandagaram, Bujanga Shayanam, Patmanabam, Suresham, Vishwadharam, Gagana Sadrasham, Megavarnam, Shubhangam. Lakshmi Kandam Kamala Nayanam Yogi Hridya Anugamyam Yogi Hridya Anugamyam Only the yogis can imagine, can arrive at this particular rubam of Shandagaram, Bujagashayanam or Bujangashayanam Batmanabam. A common man, it is impossible for him. So that picture evolved in the mind of the yogis that got painted and in Shivakashi it is printed as a picture or the sculptures who they make this idol. So that idol which got evolved as the imagination through the meditation of the rishis, they are consecrated in the temple. Through that image, through that idol, one has to imagine the omnipotent, omnipresent divine power. So idol is not the God, through the idol you are reaching the other side. But when you worship everything in the temple, remember that, that idol becomes the king of the village and the temple becomes the capital of the village and around the temple every psychological, sociological, family based, anthropological, economical, commercial activities will be taking place around the temple and that temple becomes the capital and the vigraha becomes the king of the village and the village becomes self-reliant in every activities focusing on the temple and the temple is not a prayer hall for Hindus 
Temple is more than a prayer hall. It is a social gathering center, including spirituality work there. Kshetra Kala, Kshetra Vadyam, Kshetra Sangeeda, Kshetra Achara, everything will be nurtured in that temple. And there we again see that the usefulness of the temple and the God concept. And Avatara, Malsya Kurma Varahascha Narasimhoda Vamana Ramo Ramascha Ramascha Krishna Kalki Dita Dita The ten avatars, nothing but evolution, right from the the right from the fish, the animal developed in the ocean or water, it is getting evolved up to Kalki, the human being which is killing themselves using the swords produced by themselves. So these are the evolution given in the, so evolution of the divine power in different forms. The physical body get evolved through the intrinsic inherent self-guiding, self-motivating, self-energizing, awareness and consciousness present in the living and non-living system. So, if you consider Ganesha, the Rupa and Bhava represents like an elephant. The omnipotent, omnipresent, divine power, the Paramatma is present as Jivatma. In elephant, it is present in a dog, it is present in, in, a, in, in a horse, it is present in every living being and every non-living being. So when you destroy, when you kill a human being, if you consider that the Jivatma present in you and the Jivatma present in the other person who is getting killed by you, these two are same. So you are just like brothers. So killing becomes against the religion in Hindu Dharma. Killing is not against the religion as far as Semitic religions are concerned. Millions of people are killed in the names of religion in Semitic religion, either for converting the people into their religion or those who objected the God, Bible and Quran. They are killed. Even in the name of protecting the God, the, the wars are taking place and killings are taking place. Protecting the holy book, protecting the God and protecting the so-called their uh, prayer halls, killing and death are taking place. Millions of temples, I, I correct it, tens of thousands of temples are being smashed in India. As brought down to India during the invasion of Muslims and Christians. But Hindus did not fight back because they know that the temples are not the final point of uh, divine concept or God concept.